गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग प्रधानमंत्री ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट्स टाइम टू लर्न सोशल साइंस एंड टूडे दिस सेशन इज फॉर सोशल साइंस फॉर क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट्स एंड द चैप्टर इज वर्किंग ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी एंड टू टीच दिस सब्जेक्ट आवर एक्सपर्ट इज डॉक्टर वंथन पुई खोबोंग मैम मैम यू आर वेलकम इन दिस सेशन नमस्कार मैम नमस्ते सभी को मैम इज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन इन सोशल साइंस एन सी आर टी न्यू दिल्ली सो स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेरीज एनी फीडबैक यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन अवर फोन नंबर अवर फोन नंबर इज डबल एट डबल जीरो फोर फोर जीरो फाइव फाइव नाइन इट्स ऑल्सो फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर टी वी स्क्रीन्स यू कैन नोट डाउन एंड ऑल्सो यू कैन मेल अस अवर ई मेल आई डी इज डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आर एन सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दीज आर दर मीडियम्स वेयर यू कैन कॉन्टैक्ट अस सो लेट्स मूव टू अवर एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर वन थैंक पुई खोबोंग मैम सो मैम वट आर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन टूडेज सेशन इन द एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी इंस्टीट्यूशंस Uh, thank you so much. Um, this working of institution is one chapter which is very important. And today, this is this session is the this session is the you know uh, third session for this chapter. And the first two sessions we had dealt with um, we had dealt with uh, legislature also, and then uh, we had dealt with the introduction of this chapter. so if you are going to watch this you know um session maybe it will be a good idea to look into those two uh, session that we already had also so as a continuation of those two sessions we will be discussing today how these two important institution in democracy works education ed- executive and judiciary i hope we will be able to uh, cover in this session how they work and the organizational structure we are going to discuss in this session okay ma'am i think this is very important for the students of class 9th yes so let's yes. move yes yeah this is a very important topic and then um, as we know especially in any political system with a democratic setup these three political institutions plays a very important role and the legislature that we had already discussed uh, as a continuation of that as i said we will be taking up this executive and judiciary which are primarily responsible for implementing law and also often involving in planning and also uh, this uh, adjudication of disputes that is one of the primary function of judiciary we will be discussing today now uh, if we recall what we had discussed in the last two ses- sessions we had discussed a very important you know office memorandum where this different institution three important institution had play a very important role how decisions are taken how major decisions are taken in a democratic setup uh, it was you know uh, to the example of that office memorandum we had discussed in the first session and second session now if we recall that uh, office memorandum on obc reservation it is in the textbook also uh, we see civil servants that is executive uh, prime minister that also a part of executive figuring prominently in that you know decision making process relating to that office memorandum okay. so if you recall like you know if you just assume um, what will happen like for example like if uh, uh, executive or if judiciary was not able to function properly in that context that the whole process of you know coming up with that kind of important decision it will be disturbed okay so how executive works how executive is functioning we will be discussing first and as i said um, i want you all to keep in mind Uh, the kind of uh, recall the kind of you know decision making uh, process that was involved in that um, office memorandum that we had discussed in the last two sessions and there the executive role also it was very prominent now having said that what do you mean by executive 
why they are important, let, let us just dis discuss mm -hmm. in a very brief manner because uh, we will not be able to discuss in a very, you know, um, detailed manner. Mm -hmm. So uh, executive is one important institution, as I said, in any democratic setup. It is one organ of the government. Uh, it is consisting of, you know, uh, different group of people. It is body of persons uh, with the power to initiate any major policies and to make decisions to implement them on the basis of the constitution and on the basis of the laws of the country. So executives are responsible or a group of body who are you know, responsible to take day-to-day -day decisions. Okay? So their main functions uh, are you know, implementation of laws and policies that is adopted by the legislature. Whatever law in the form of law that comes from the legislature, it is the responsibility of the executive to implement those laws. And then executives are also often involved in framing of policy in terms of giving input, in terms of being at the center of uh, decision making so many times. Now, there are two types of executive. One is political executive, another is uh, permanent executive. Hmm. Political executive, uh, they are elected for a specific period of time and this political executive are those representatives that we elect every now and then, maybe after, uh, after every, you know, interval of time we elect our representative, those are political executive and permanent executive, they are appointed on a long term basis, for example, civil servants and any authority, any person who is involved in any executive organs of the government, they are part of this permanent executive. And oh, yes, uh, in a democratic setup, uh, you know, um, though their term is uh, shorter, though they are elected for a specific period of time, political mm. executive, they are considered to be, or they are, con they are more powerful than the permanent executive. Yes, Dr. Okay. Khobong, ma'am, uh, yes. my question is why political executives have more power than other executives? Okay. So uh, this, why political executive have more, you know, power, they exercise more power than mm. this permanent executive. It is very simple, especially in a democratic setup. As I said, India, as we know, uh, we have, a, you know, a long history of democracy and we are one of the um, uh, uh, dynamic democracy, you know, uh, though so many people had so many doubts when we started the journey of this uh, interesting journey of uh, democracy as a political system and as a way of life right mm -hmm. after independence. Mm -hmm. uh, India as a country with lots of its diversity and with lots of its challenges, it, with, uh, it you know, uh, proved wrong all those speculations and all those, you know, um, uh, uh, ideas, all those, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, having who have, all those people or all those institutions having doubt on the future of India's democracy. Today, India is a celebrated uh, democracy all over the world. And then in a democratic setup, uh, coming back to your question, uh, as I said, political executive, they have, uh, they exercise more power than permanent executive for the simple reason that in a democracy, uh, the supreme power, it resides with the people. Hmm. The, the supreme power is the will of the people. And that is supreme. And that will of the people, it is exercised by elected representative, that is uh, the ministers. The elected representative we have at different level, mm -hmm. maybe at the local government level, at the state government level, and at the union government level. This executive, uh, they are the representative of the people. They represent the will of the people. They may not be an expert and they don't require to be an expert also, but they are advised by expert and decisions are taken based on the overall objective of the political system. So in this manner, um, these elected representative, they are answerable to people on the decisions, on the consequences of their decisions. So in a democracy for a simple reason that the will of the people, it is exercised. The will of the people, it is exercised by elected representative. The, you know, what, the people are wanting or uh, the 
which of the people it is exercised by this elected representative. So they are that representative. That is why they are more powerful, more powerful. than the permanent executive. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, how these political executives are functioning? Okay. Now, um, political executive, you know, uh, they mm -hmm. perform a wide range of uh, duty. Then they have a lot of responsibilities also. As uh, we already mentioned, political executives are elected for a specific period of time. Here, I just want to highlight in the context of the union government, let us just discuss how these political executives are functioning. We will discuss this uh, uh, two important you know, uh, political institutions, that is the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers, as well as the President. Okay. So, Prime Minister, as we all know, how Prime Minister is appointed? Uh, Prime Minister, as we know, like, you know, it is, he is appointed, he or she is appointed by the President and he is not selected or he is not just, you know, handpicked. Um, Prime Minister is appointed the, uh, on the basis of his commanding majority in the House of the People. So, the President will appoint the leader who is, you know, having majority in the House of the People. And the power of the Prime Minister, if we look at the Constitution, it may not be, you know, um, uh, so vast and it may not be, you know, spelled out in a very um, in a clear manner also. But over the years, the role of the Prime Minister has increased, not just in our country, but all over the world. Wherever there is parliamentary system of government, Prime Minister's position and power and responsibility has increased so much. The first, uh, you know, part that we would like to, I just want to highlight here is the role of this coordination and supervision that the Prime Minister has played in the whole political system. He coordinate in the sense that he chairs the meeting of the cabinet and he supervised the overall working of these different departments and different, uh, different uh, department and different ministry, he supervised and he coordinate. And also, um, in that position, he also allocate, you know, works to the other ministers. He assigned duty, he assigned, you know, what department they have to take care of, uh, which department they are going to be in charge. So, allocation of work, it is also done by the Prime Minister. And within the cabinet system, uh, within the cabinet also, the Prime Minister is the most powerful within the cabinet. If you see, like if the Prime Minister, for example, if the Prime Minister resigned and all the other, hmm. you know, uh, Council of Ministers also, they have to hmm. resign. However, like, you know, the restriction of power, I just want to highlight here, uh, power of Prime Minister, you know, to some extent, like with the increasing coalition, you know, government uh, that has been a very important part of our uh, political system uh, for the last many decades. In coalition system, power of Prime Minister, it is somewhat restricted because he has to look into the needs and, you know, the demands of so many other political parties who are a coalition partners. They, he has to, you know, uh, look into it that, you know, their interests are also represented. So in this way, balancing act, the Prime Minister needs to do apart from all this coordination and supervisory role that he has to play in any parliamentary system of government. And Council of Ministers, uh, they are appointed by the President on the advice of the Prime Minister. And uh, if we look at, when we talk about Council, Council of Ministers, it is a group of ministers um, who are having, you know, direct responsibility, direct charge of different departments. Now, uh, decisions, uh, because see, it is not possible for the Council of Ministers mm. to meet every time. That is why Cabinet, they play a very important role in this manner. So, cabin, most of the important decisions, you know, of policy decisions, it is taken in the Cabinet meeting. And then none of the members, none of the, you know, Council of Ministers members or this, the, the Cabinet members can, you know, uh, say that they don't know and they do not support about the decisions that is taken in the cabinet meeting. They have a collective responsibility towards mm. the decisions, towards any decisions that is taken in the cabinet. So teamwork, it is very important. Collective responsibility is one important feature of this parliamentary system of government. And then 
cabinet are assisted by civil servants. Maybe these civil servants, like you know, they may know more about. Uh, they may be knowing. Uh, they may have a you know a better knowledge about the technicalities, or they may be having a better knowledge about the subject matter that falls under those uh, different uh, ministry. But then, as we said. Uh, because of this uh, democratic system that we have, we are following democratic system of government. So the uh, civil servant, they assist, they you know provide different pictures and they provide different options to the ministers, to the you know the cabinet ministers, to the council of ministers, so that by looking into the overall picture of the country, overall picture of the situation, the uh, ministers they take decisions okay so in this way you know collective responsibility and also decisions which are taken for a worse country for a large number of people like us with lots of you know diversity not just in terms of you know culture not in terms of just uh, you know uh, language but in terms of region also so in this way you know in uh, the form of assisting in the form of you know this collective responsibility and teamwork uh, you know, sensible and appropriate decisions are uh, taken most of the time. And another institution which is very important that I would like to discuss here is the president. We may say that, you know, a uh, president is um, a nominal head, like uh, we see the monarch in Britain, president is the nominal head. And uh, we may say that, you know, um, as a nominal head of the state, he is not actually you know, taking up, he is not actually uh, doing any uh, job or he is not uh, functioning in a very effective manner. But then, uh, if you look at the constitution, constitution has to you know uh, empower the president to such to such an extent that uh, if you read the power of the president, uh, you may you know think that you know there is nothing that the president cannot do. So, uh, as a head of the state, all the appointment. And all the you know agreement that is signed with the um, foreign countries, and then representing the country in any international forum, also it is you know uh, done by the president. And all the law, any legislation that is passed in the legislature, it goes with his signature. He has to sign it. He has to approve and it, all the legislation uh, that is uh, the, the passed in the um, parliament. He has to approve on those things okay so in this way president he exercised a nominal power as the head of the state and his role it is very much crucial in appointing prime minister especially when there is no party who gets majority in election or if no coalition group if a group of party who form a pre-poll alliance who had come together and fight election, who had come together and, you know, uh, contest election as one group, if there is no, uh, if they also do not get any majority in the election, then the role of the president in appointing the prime minister, it becomes very crucial. So what happened in that case, he exercised his discretionary power and he appointed a person or a leader whom he think will be able to command majority in the house and that person will be given a st stipulated time to prove his majority his command in the house okay so political executive in this way they mm. function now what some activity that I would like to suggest here, which is the, uh, which will be very joyful also for students who are watching this. Uh, you can uh, take up these uh, three activities uh, mm. that has uh, that I'm suggesting here. You can make a chart on present government showing the details of the cabinet, cabinet, the responsibility, you know, the ministry that they are taking care of, and then the important, you know, decisions uh, that has been taken relating in their ministry. And then also, you can make use of this mass media. You can observe a live telecast 
or a special telecast on the proceeding of any session of parliament. Uh, the session, the monsoon session of parliament just mm. got over, the winter session of parliament you can watch. Any session, and, uh, Lok Sabha and Rajya yes. Sabha sessions, yeah. they can even, watch. Yeah, yeah, even state legislative assembly mm. session mm. also. Mm. So that you can understand, you know, um, the details of the proceedings of legislature. Mm. And then another thing is we just uh, recently we had election uh, for uh, the head of our state, um, that is the president. And you can follow any news report on election for the office of the president that was recently held. And you can note down information related to the preparation of different political parties for that election, the candidates, the process of election, the oath taking, and then the different activities or the different responsibility that has mm -hmm. been taken up by the president, the new president since then. So this kind of joyful activity you can take up in your free time so that you will be able to understand how this political executive functions and how this political executive are taking out, carrying out their responsibility on day-to-day -day basis. Yes, through these activities, uh, students can know more about this uh, chapter, about the executive and the judiciary, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma um, Judiciary is also a very important institution that we had already, you know, I had already mentioned yeah. also. And then in the beginning, in the introductory session also, I had just mentioned the basic function of judiciary. The basic function of judiciary, as we know, is to dispense justice and to, you know, uh, take care of the different conflicts uh, that emerge in the society. Judiciary is... To, uh, as I said, in India, we have a judiciary which is, you know, integrated. That is integrated judiciary system we have. That means that all the courts, like from the lowest court uh, to till the high court, they are the integral part. They are integrated with this uh, Supreme Court. So Supreme Court, they uh, is the highest. If you look at the, uh, in this um, um, chart, at the apex, it is the Supreme Court, the High Court, District Court, and subordinate courts. They are there. So uh, we have integrated judiciary system, as I mentioned. And then here, one very important, you know, um, power of this judiciary that I would like to mention is uh, judicial review, which is not found in all the country. Mm. Uh, in a country like, you know, in America, American political system, they also have this judici uh, judicial review. This is a very, you know, uh, profound power that is residing with the judiciary uh, to interpret the constitutional validity of law. That is, they can examine and uh, any legislation that is passed by the legislature and they can declare unconstitutional, that is, they can strike down any law that is passed by the legislature uh, if they found that it is going against or it is not in consonance, it is not in accordance with the constitution. This is one very important remarkable function that is uh, carried out by this judiciary that is residing with the judiciary. And also another one is guardian of fundamental rights. You will see that, you know, this uh, judiciary, uh, they are very important in protecting the rights of the people. Hmm. Any individual, if they feel that they are their rights are violated and uh, by any organization, by anyone or by any institutions, they can always approach the court, you know, to restore their right. And then um, since their function is very important in a democratic setup, uh, judiciary, it is short to be met independent from political influence. Hmm. It should not be under the control of legislature. That is why the way, uh, you know, the members of the, or the judges of the High Court or Supreme Court are appointed, it is done in a uh, very, you know, um, collective manner, and not done by only one institution or only one person. And then the judges of the Supreme Court and High Court also, they cannot be removed by any office by the president, even by the prime minister also. There is a certain proceedings that needs to be followed. The same process that is used for the removal of the president, that is impeachment, is, you know, necessary if any of the judges in the high court or Supreme Court, if they have to be removed from their service. So in this way, 
the judiciary it occupy a very important and a very significant place in a democratic setup i'm just highlighting these uh, two or three important you know mm. um, uh, aspect the function and how they are uh, appointed and how they can be removed okay. yeah and this is um, two activities you can just uh, you know uh, carry out this activity as and when like you know you have a free time you can gather information about judicial proceedings of any case from any subordinate courts or the supreme court and then you can follow news report a regional or national uh, news uh, for a week and you can find out the different cases that are taken up by the high court and the supreme court for even this, subordinate yeah, for this also. activity they can take yeah. the help of their parents yes. the elders and it will help them to study this uh, subject ma'am thank you so yeah. much for this informative session it was very nice session thank you so much ma'am thank namaskar. you namaste सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स आज आप पढ़ रहे थे जुडिशरी के बारे में एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी के बारे में हमें उम्मीद है कि आपको ये सेशन बहुत अच्छा लगा होगा और जो भी इन्फॉर्मेशन दी गई है और आपने नोट डाउन कर लिया होगा और अपने नोट्स बना लिए होंगे तो आप कहीं मत जाइए जुड़े रहिए प्रधानमंत्री ई विदय चैनल से कुछ ही पलों में हम फिर हाजिर होंगे नए सत्र के साथ तब तक के लिए हमें इजाज़त दीजिए नमस्कार